Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command, World War II, World at War. We are playing our Access Let's Play, and we're in the late, war uh, the late war phase. We have seven turns left in the game. It is November of uh, 15th of 1946. The war ends in the spring of 1947, uh, and the war is going very well for us. We've overrun uh, France, the Low Countries, Denmark, Norway, Russia as the Germans. The Japanese have overrun India and China, and the Japanese are currently driving on the capital of Australia, while the Germans have taken London, they've taken the secondary British capital at Manchester, and they have taken the city of Newcastle. They're about to enter Scotland uh, and go after the final British capital at Edinburgh. Uh, the American fleet has been destroyed numerous times, although they still have a strong force somewhere out there, and the Germans are driving deep into the heart of Africa. They've taken all of North Africa. They've taken Ethiopia. They've taken British Somaliland last turn. Uh, they've taken Kenya, uh, and they're now about to drive into Rhodesia, if we have enough time to get in there. Um, meanwhile, Saudi Arabia has also just fallen to the German Africa Corps, uh, or at least R Rihad, or Rihad, Riyadh has. Uh, it looks like Medina is a secondary capital, so we may not quite knock uh, the Saudis out of the war quite yet. Um, and that's the situation right now. Uh, that's a brief summary of where we're at. Turkey's joined the war for the Axis. Uh, the forces in Argentina have taken over almost all of South America, with the exception of the northern countries. And uh, that's, the, that's basically what's going on. So um, without further ado, let's go ahead and move forward uh, to the next episode because um, I guess that's what we need to do, right? <laughs> or not next episode, but the next, uh, the next turn since we've already, already conducted our own. So let's go ahead and jump forward here and see what December of 1946 brings. Attrition for some Argentine forces... British Somaliland surrenders. Germany plunders a very small amount of money from that. Paraguay surrenders. Germany also gets a very small amount of money from that. Saudi Arabia moves the capital to Medina. Yes, we wanted to keep them sailing into the Atlantic. Axis are hindering supply on Crete. Our Japanese submarines are continuing to hinder the supply of the Australian forces at uh, their own... Uh, U.S. starts heavily protected convoys to the U.K. What does that mean? Does that mean they're deploying massive numbers of... 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 ships? And, and I don't know why. Is it because our submarines are in the Irish Sea? Like, what's the trigger for that? Because they probably should have started massive protected convoys last turn. I, I don't quite know what the... Tr that's weird. It's like, oh... England is basically defeated. Let's make sure those convoys are really well escorted. Okay, guys. A little bit late to the party on that one, but okay. Anyway. Um, we've detected an American headquarter unit near Broken Hill in Australia. We've cut off multiple pockets of American forces here on the northeastern coast of Australia. And uh, we'll see if they try and break out or operate or anything like that. Uh, our own hold in the south there is a little bit tenuous. Meanwhile, some American... Naval vessels showing up there, some light cruisers showing up near Scotland. Doing some damage, damage to British submarines. Our motor torpedo boats are our best anti-submarine platforms so far in this game. I don't know if I've sunk an allied submarine yet. Would love to. Don't think I have yet, though. That is such a cool-looking bomber. I think someone said that was that this icon for this American jet strategic bomber is actually like uh, an icon for what would be a German strategic bomber, I think. Meanwhile, we've got a couple of landing forces here in the north of England. Or, sorry, I guess in Scotland, technically. The real challenge here is England's such a narrow... not England. The British Isles are such a narrow body of land that we can only bring a few forces to bear, really. Meanwhile, uh, Allied tactical bombers going after our carriers here off the coast of Australia. Tactical bombers going after some, or, some of our submarines in the Irish Sea. Seems like a weird allocation of Allied air power. I would think they would want to focus it against our ground troops. Shit, that light carrier is going to get sunk. Got to get that out of there. Its whole air wing's destroyed. Its hull integrity's down to two. 
Meanwhile, the uh, Saudis just destroyed a garrison unit of ours. American paratroopers fell back north. We just engaged an American... Multiple American landing forces. Great! The Americans just landed troops in southern England. Nice! We just destroyed an American transport off the coast of Australia. Apparently a whole shit ton of American transports are moving into Australia there. We destroyed one, but two more came into Melbourne, by the looks of it. Okay. We'll have to see how this all plays out. It's a lot of ground units to have the Allies just pump into Australia and make things more difficult for us. Those jerks. Why don't they just give up? They just give up already. Alright, looks like they're operating their units out of the Townsville pocket. American Corps suffering some attrition damage. Alright, Brisbane should fall. Then I can move all my navy to make sure that we blockade Melbourne. Meanwhile, we need to figure out what to do with that American paratrooper unit that landed in southern England. I mean, we've got plenty of extra troops to deal with it, really. Okay, we got a bunch new of new units. These guys at Brisbane are without supply, so we should be able to knock them out this turn. We do. Success. Now we can move this guy south. Brisbane is now Japanese. All right, we'll reinforce this guy. Move that headquarters unit to Charlottesville. A wide sweeping maneuver, flanking the American forces. All right, uh, is that another headquarters? I have so many headquarters units. What's the goddamn point of that? All right, um. We're going to lose our air wing there, aren't we? Yeah, that was pointless. All right, let's get our carriers out of here before they get uh, get sunk. Meanwhile, with the fall of Brisbane, we can move our warships south. Hopefully they don't get destroyed by American tack air. But to cut off Melbourne and to make sure no more allied troop convoys make it down there. This guy has five supply. These guys have three. Can they bomb? They can. We're going to deal with enemy interceptors and lose some casualties. But we might be able to reduce this base at Adelaide. Or Adelaide, or however you pronounce that. Move this armor. There we go. So we just took this port. It's actually a really big deal. That we just took that port. I mean, I know we're slowly moving our headquarters units south to, you know, keep try and keep the supply going, which we're very low on in the first place. But to take that port actually gives us an outlet for more supplies. That's a pretty big deal. These guys have supplies? How about these guys? Trying to reduce Townsville. All right, so Northern Australia or Northeastern Australia is going to fall to us with relative ease by the looks of it. Amphibious units coming south doesn't look like it. Interceptors from where? Where are they flying out of? Alright, so we destroyed them. Took the port. Or we should take the port. And we do. Alright, that port is ours. 
More American interceptors really ravaging our own fighter aircraft over there. Alright, where are these fighters flying out of? Oh, they're down here. Okay. So they're still around. In any event, we took the port on, of Karanis. I'm assuming there's a sub over here or something. These troops will drive south to Townsville next turn. Shit. All right, so we're threatening on converging and cutting off this lone American headquarters unit. Apparently there's multiple Eisenhowers because I know I've destroyed him more than once. Uh, can we see what they have in Melbourne? Doesn't look like it. All right, so converging on this pocket in the south. I, I do think this pocket will be difficult to reduce though. These are strategic bombers here to finish off this American air unit over there. Then we'll go ahead and use it here to hurt this headquarters unit. These guys are going to bomb Kobar. Attack to follow these guys already. We have. Okay. The one good thing is if the weather holds... We've got a lot of air units and a lot of headquarters units, so we should be able to use that to our advantage. I don't know if there's any partisan units. There are. Technically, Brisbane could have partisans, so we need to be mindful of that. As we move south... Meanwhile, I'm keeping the rest of my, f my fleet and my units here near Japan, just again in the event the American Navy comes calling. This guy back here to reinforce his fighters. This guy will... Just there. Light cruiser can upgrade. Let's do that. ASW tech. Destroyers can upgrade their anti-air and ASW. Okay, escort carrier... Advanced Fighter and ASW. Alright, so I think Japan is done. Let's move into Africa. Alright, so we've invaded Rhodesia. Operate this headquarters unit to the front. These guys are going to move to Nairobi. These guys will land, take what's left of that territory. He'll move down to Abbas as a garrison. And we're driving further into the heart of Africa. Meanwhile, in Saudi Arabia. We've got a Saudi Arabian core here operating at Medina, at Medina, Medina, however you pronounce that. Should be finished as soon as these German troops show up and then Saudi Arabia will surrender. Um, move back here. Let's check out Norway. Can't remember if I actually attacked at Norway last turn. him forward. Meanwhile, uh, in the north, let's see. And they're going to destroy that American strategic bomber unit. That gives us a big national morale bonus. Finish off that British infantry corps, a moderate national morale bonus. Hit the garrison south of Edinburgh. 
then we'll destroy this American tactical air unit here south of Edinburgh. Move our tanks forward here to start reducing Edinburgh. We actually might be able to... Oh, it's raining crap. Okay, so the rain's going to prevent us from bombing and finishing Edinburgh off. Okay. Can we operate this guy north to Newcastle? We can. So we're going to bring some of that heavy artillery north. Bring some infantry forward also. Meanwhile, we've got to deal with this American airborne unit, which just landed in our rear. Good thing we have plenty of tanks around. So the Americans have no supply either. They didn't land on a port. So they die. Thank you for that. That was easy enough. Meanwhile, another American transport here. The 11th Army apparently is evading damage. Those jerks. But we got them. Okay. Another American transport here. This is the second army. So we'll go ahead and see if we can knock them out with our other naval vessels over here. Doesn't look like we're going to be able to. Maybe I can move these guys south. Either way, I don't think I'm going to have enough power to destroy them. I might damage them. Yeah, he won't reach. Uh, motor torpedo boat's too far away. And air units can't work because it's raining. England socked in with rain and fog. No jump tonight. All right. So we'll move these guys north. Make sure we leave some troops behind. Right, reinforce. Why can he only do one reinforcement? Is he not a head in a headquarter unit or something? Okay. Trying to leverage the uh, off day from the rain to get everybody up to max strength. Surprised they didn't land in France. Maybe they'll do that next turn. Okay. France is pretty damn empty right now. Sure would suck if they decided now was the time to land troops. Alright, where are we at from a strength perspective? The Americans 51 units, the British are at 21. What about national morale? British are down to 8%. Americans are at 22. Okay. Let's swap these infantry out. They can't attack. Move some troops on long-range transports. Part of me wonders if we uh, put some of these guys on long-range transports, maybe we can uh, drop troops on Edinburgh or the other cities itself. Meanwhile, I think, I can't remember if the, I had these guys last turn or this turn, but I have some new units that I need to deploy. Some panzers, yeah. Some bombers, some strategic bombers. None of which I think will reach England this turn, and some Finnish soldiers. All right. 
We could go after Sweden, too, although they're our friends. Um, all right. All right, let's declare war against Ecuador. Seeing as there's not many more countries we can still declare war against, that we can actually do anything against. But we'll declare war against Ecuador. Oh, apparently my troops can't can't cross the border. So, yeah. That was dumb. We're now at war and we can't do anything about it. All right. Um, okay, so that's the situation there. I think that about does it. I mean, I've got a bunch of money. I just don't have a bunch of things to spend it on. Okay. All right. It's a little bit of a shorter video. Let's... Oh, hell. Let's go ahead and put a second turn in here. We'll go ahead and see what the allies do. Uh, some attrition for our troops. Quite a lot of attrition for our troops. But we'll see what happens here. We're only at 20 minutes, so we might as well uh, see what we can do. Now we're getting a bunch of research that's kind of like, all right, well, it's a little bit late now, but uh, thanks for the research bonuses, I guess. Okay. Reinforcements. I don't know what... I heard naval units moving, but I didn't actually see anything happen. Meanwhile, an American army unit's going on the offensive, driving for Aberdeen right there, or Adelaide, just by itself. Just like, we're on the offensive, guys. General Eisenhower has said he wants to attack personally with his revolver. Rename him Patton. Okay. Think faster, AI. Think faster. We're about actually we're just gonna be crossing into nineteen forty six. Or forty seven, sorry. And as the new year dawns, and the world enters its eighth year at war, the Axis powers close in on ultimate victory against the Western Allies. The lone nation standing against them, the United States, uh, is the only feasibly independent nation in the major uh, Allied powers by the end of this war. Holy shit, he just destroyed that land unit of ours. God damn it. I don't really care about him. We knew he'd die. American transports! More American transports? Die. I mean, I'm happy to destroy transports at sea. Just hanging out there all by their lonesome. Hopefully we can take Edinburgh this turn. Be nice to get some good weather. It looks like it's snowing there right now. We've got a lot of soft underbellies. The Americans, with all these troops that they're just sailing into harm's way to reinforce lost causes, I think they'd be better off if they just said, you know what, we're going to send them to uh, land in North Africa or take Rome or do something real crazy. Partisan activity in Australia. French partisans are disrupting supply. Oh, shit, I forgot. I've got, like, troops I need to keep in certain bases in France. Okay... So, should be January of 47 now. Five turns remaining. Okay. An American heavy tank in Melbourne? That's great. The Japanese don't really have the ability to counter that. Okay, American fighters are going to intercept our bombers there. They've got jets, we don't. Actually, I think I can upgrade to jets. I should probably do that. Okay, we're at least inflicting some pretty heavy casualties on their lone fighters over here. Hey, 
All right. Got him. The American headquarter unit there is destroyed. Let's destroy these guys at Kobar. Got him. All right. So Central Australia is being overrun as we're getting more headquarters units here south. Can we reinforce these guys? We can. Let's do that. We have to figure out how to deal with this heavy tank. This is a this is a level one tank, so I'm Amer imagining these American tanks may just move forward and crush us. All right. Let's see. Do we, can, these guys can bomb? We've already used up their escorts, I think. Ten percent chance that we knock out three of their garrison. Or we're just hitting their supply. Nice! Alright. Oh, I can't move in? So we destroyed the uh, the garrison at Canberra, but we don't have the movement points to move in. Shit. Well, that's a fail. Alright, let's go attack these guys. Okay, set mode to naval. They can't attack, apparently. Alright, so we'll at least sink him with our heavy cruiser. I mean, I guess the one good thing is these American troops probably have very little supply. It does look like they still have a headquarters unit, though, unfortunately. Okay. Alright, so these Americans up here are going to get themselves destroyed. Meanwhile, our SNLF forces... Moving off to sea. And let's obliterate this port so the guys at Townsville have no supply. <clears throat> okay. All right, in any event. Driving these guys south. All right, so Townsville should fall next turn. Meanwhile, we might take the Australian capital next turn, depending on how things play out. Might not. Back in the home islands. Upgrade some of our weaponry and some of our ships. Just again, in the off chance the Americans do show up. Probably should make sure we've got everything all upgraded and maxed out and ready to uh, ready to roll. Okay. Alright, so that's that. I think the Japanese are done there. Meanwhile, if we move into Saudi Arabia, we've got the Turkish army attacking here at Medina.
Okay, so we took the eastern uh, oil fields now in Saudi Arabia. We didn't take Medina this turn. Saudi Arabia continues to hold on. My tanks are getting more and more lost. Moving back to England. They didn't land any troops there. I still have that transport there in the middle of the ocean. We just sank. We try and sink this American light cruiser. I don't know. I don't think we're going to have much luck. Our best luck is probably just the submarines taking disproportionate losses and wearing it down. Guessing the motor torpedo boats won't have the most success. Well, now he's back in a port, I guess, so that's a bad idea. All right. Hunt mode. Ah! Move him back. Where do we need? Operate him to breast. All right. So we'll do that. Uh, let's see, it's raining still. Yeah, so it doesn't look like we're... Oh, good. So these guys are... Their morale is trash. So there you go. Edinburgh Falls. The Germans have captured Edinburgh. Glasgow. Glasgow has fallen. Another British Infantry Corps here on the southern tip is ours. And there you have it. I think England's going to surrender. We just took their last capital. Should just leave a handful of American units left uh, to be mopped up. And at least, hopefully that brings, uh, knocks the Americans out of the war. We'll see. Meanwhile, our tactical air force finishing off this American light cruiser. Very good, my gentlemen. Very good. Hurts their national morale just a little bit more. See, British national morale is down to 7%. The Americans are at 21%, falling precipitously. Who knows what the impact of England being knocked out of the war will have on American morale. They're also going to have a boatload of troops that are cut off. Meanwhile, the British still have troops at Narvik. Okay. Those guys should be gone. Uh, Argentina, can these troops invade yet? Slowly. They can invade! Alright. And then down here in Rhodesia. Okay. Troops advancing south on Salisbury. Is he? I wonder if... Is Salisbury named after Lord Salisbury, the, um... Prime Minister. All right, fall back to Abbas Abbas. Operate this headquarter unit down toward the front line so that the Turkish forces at least have good supply. And I think that's going to do it for this episode. Let's bring these air units into Australia. All right. So I think that's going to do it for this turn. We're at about 34 minutes. I think we've got time for one more turn. This is just going to be an epic turn. See if we can end the war here today or if we end up needing one more turn. Or maybe two more. Who knows? The Australians do have two potential capitals. The UK surrenders. Germany plunders 1,583 MPP. Not that we needed more money. So the British have been knocked out of the war. I'm assuming the Canadians are still fighting. I'm surprised we didn't get like a alert saying that American morale was hurt by the withdrawal of uh, the British from the war. 
I guess that means we're going to have to fight to the very end, to the, to the very last turn, actually, given the fact that we're not, there's no way we're going to invade America proper. At least I'm assuming. Australia continues to fight on, though. Some uh, large American warships up there in the northern tip of Australia, or of England. They're pulling out. Several American units are cut off, presumably without any means of supply in Scotland, so we'll have to mop up with them. A large American force is off the coast of Japan again. Wow. Holy shit. Oh my god. Is there no fog of war? Like, are, we're, we're spotting all of this? Oh, we can't beat that fleet. But hey, the more American ships we can destroy trying to get to Australia, the better. Whoa. That is a huge fleet. That, that will wear us down. That will beat us. Fortunately, it doesn't look like they have any troop transports with them. Yikes. Um, <sighs> All right. Hopefully we can at least knock out uh, the Australian capital there. American units all there suffering attrition. Lots of attrition. I don't know how we're going to deal with that American fleet. That's huge. That must be like their whole navy. Other than what's in the what's in the Atlantic. I mean, we did know they were building up large numbers of uh, naval vessels again. Do we have new units for anyone but Germany? Oh, geez. Japan's got a shit ton of maritime aircraft. Did those just show up this turn, or were those there the turn before? Why did uh, all those air, all those units just suddenly go away? Where did they... Where did they go? Ah. Okay. Fall back there. These guys can't attack because of the weather. Ah. All right. All right, so they're going to deal with American interceptors. The whole fleet! Good God. Okay. All right, so we got that American destroyer. Pulled our own back to our own port. Let's make sure these ports are upgraded with as much AA defense as we can get. I don't actually know if it makes a difference or not. I think it does, but it might only make a difference when they're bombing for strategic reasons. I'm not 100% sure. But we'll make sure they're all upgraded anyway. Five to two? Yeah, I don't want to make that trade. Uh, fall back this way. Hmm. Can we go for the escort carriers? Jesus, the air wing was basically obliterated. This has been the most American feeling battle that we've fought yet. And what I mean by that is just the most like, oh yeah, the Americans have overwhelming numbers. That's to be expected because they're America. It's the first time in this game it's felt like that since since Russia was knocked out. 
Good job, light cruiser, destroying that American escort carrier. But you're dead now. So, good luck. Alright, we're going to lose that light cruiser. Okay. I don't want to move the carrier over here because we know there's a fleet carrier over here. We should get some escorts from our own fighters that are based in Japan. Be nice for the weather to turn in our favor. I don't want to race my own fleet back piecemeal. That seems like that's inviting disaster. So I guess I'll just actually keep my own fleet here in the south where it can accomplish some things. Like destroying that American tactical air unit. Japanese can take Townsville in advance. Okay. Or they can destroy these American troops on transports. Damage evaded? Oh, that's bullshit. Got it. Like, again, why did they send their fleet up there with no invasion force when, you know, they could actually potentially do some good if they sent them down here? That's the kind of AI thinking that I just don't understand. In any event, our air units are pretty much going to reduce the capital of Australia. Alright, so Australia's capital has fallen. And now we're driving on the secondary capital. We have good supply, by the way, too. So we just destroyed the American headquarters unit here. We'll have to try and weaken this American armored unit with air because we simply don't have the high enough caliber tanks to do it with our own armored units. It's three to one against. I guess just when you have sheer numbers, you can potentially afford that. Yeah, SL. Oh, come on, SNL Force. Got him. Melbourne has fallen. So that should knock Australia out of the war. I don't think Perth is an alternate capital. It's not. It does have secondary supply. Apparently I forgot about this Kwantung army out here. Let's get him out of there before the Americans find and sink him. Alright. So America should be done. Or not America. Australia should be done. Gotta wonder if the Americans will keep sending transports in that direction or if they'll switch over to, like, amphibious and start doing some really obnoxious landings. Uh, aircraft, repair those. Oh, we're gonna need to get some repair jobs done here in the south of Australia, I think. But I think that makes Australia knocked out. Got him. Destroyed that American air unit. Alright, so if we look at research here, or if we go to reports, Americans still have 46 ground units, they still have 10 air units, and they have 38 naval units. They're building gobs and gobs of naval units. Their national morale is below 18%, though. Their MPP losses are exceeding income, so they're fighting on, but they're suffering. Um... The invasion down here. Oh, he doesn't have level one mobility. He's not going to be able to keep up. Invasion of Ecuador is continuing. Germans are attempting to drive on Salisbury. They've got to take kind of a roundabout way. Their headquarters unit can't keep up. Uh... All right, the German units arrive there near us or near Medina. OK. 
Okay. So we didn't take the capital yet. But we have a pretty good chance of taking it next turn, I think. I mean, now we could certainly turn our forces south and go after, like, Vichy France or Spain or whatever. Certainly is an option. Okay, those heavy tanks finished that American unit. And that American unit. Rip to these guys. Bye-bye, American units. Bye-bye, American units. Drove the Chevy to the levee, but the levee was dry. All right, so look at those losses this turn for the Americans. Over 3,000 worth. Their morale is down to 16%. Land at Belfast. We could go to war with Ireland and knock them out of the war right away. Maybe we just got, like, an intelligence bonanza when England fell. It basically said, like, you know where everything is. No convoys into England anymore. Let's see, Narvik has fallen to us. Again, Sweden. We could go to war with Sweden, I guess. I don't know what we're going to do for the next few turns. Australia should fall. I guess let's go ahead and fast forward here and have Australia fall. This is a longer episode, so I do apologize for that, guys. I know we're approaching an hour. Okay, Australia surrenders, Japan plunders, I mean there's like mop-up operations in Crete and stuff. You'd think the Americans would be like, alright guys, I mean we were given the option to claim vic- oh there you go, Axis decisive victory. So the game does end. Well this is a fitting uh, last episode, I guess. I, I can't... That's it? It just tells me Axis Decisive Victory? I don't... That's all I get? There's no... Uh, nothing else? So we were trying to move on them. You can see the Americans have a huge military presence here in Mexico. I don't know if they were like trying to move south to deal with our invasion of South America or what they were doing, but there's a large number of American units down there. The heartland of America is interestingly empty, relatively empty. We could have landed in New Orleans or Houston or wherever pretty easily. They did have a lot of troops here in, Nor in the New England area, or the Northeast, I guess, not New England. You know, the American West Coast was also somewhat empty. They still have a bunch of battleships here um, off the American coast. You can see Midway... Hawaii is relatively lightly covered. You can see more transports bringing in troops, heavy armored tanks. New Zealand was basically empty. Just that one American unit left in Australia oh, and one other bomber unit over there and a fighter unit. Yeah, so if we zoom out here we can see... They had five escort, six es or seven escort carriers, two fleet carriers. Like if they had ever sent this, they had never sent a force like this against us when they sent their piecemeals. They sent something probably about half that size. But if they had ever done that, they could have destroyed our navy and really changed the balance of war. But they never did. Just shows you how much strength the American economy gives the Americans in this game. I mean, even that they didn't even send two heavy carriers, and they left a strong force guarding the American West Coast. So that's kind of interesting. Meanwhile, our invasion of uh, British South Africa would have been easy. They had basically no troops there. The entire British Empire would have fallen to us. Interesting that the colonies continue to fight on after the fall, though. Canada has nothing in it. They stripped everything out of Canada. Oh, they had one coastal command. Yeah, so, all right. I guess that's that's going to wrap it up, guys. I think this was episode 85, I think. The uh, the conclusion of our game, a victory. I would have liked a little, like, character, like, flavor text or something. I don't know. 
Seemed kind of anticlimactic. We did win a decisive victory, though. And uh, that's going to do it for this series. I, I don't know what's next. Um, you know, presumably by the time you're seeing this, I'm playing some Steel Division. Uh, we're going to obviously continue Rule the Waves. Uh, Rule the Waves 2. War in the Pacific obviously will continue as well. There's a lot of games that are either coming out or have come out or whatever that I want to cover, and there's some other series ideas that I want to do. I know we're looking at doing a collaboration Rule the Waves with Tortuga. Um, there's there's a lot of different things that I'm looking at doing, and there's some other games that are coming out shortly as well, like um, uh, Field of Glory Empire. So like there's, there's a lot of different projects that I'm, I'm interested in doing. I would consider doing an allied Let's Play. I know some of you have suggested that. But it probably will be a little bit before we start that, if we do that at all. Um, just because, you know, this has been sort of the one of the cornerstones of my channel in many ways, similar to how uh, Ultimate General Civil War was for the better part of, not quite a year, but certainly uh, around that. And um, I only have so much room in my uh, in my channel to do so many series, right? War in the Pacific's not ending anytime soon. Uh, Steel Division may or may not stick around as a major part of the channel or not, but we're at least going to have periodic videos. Rule the Waves will definitely be a major part of the channel. So, you know, with with Field of Glory Empires and some other things coming out, uh, we'll see what we have in store uh, next. But at least for now, I hope you guys enjoyed the series. Let me know if you want to see an Allied Let's Play. We'd certainly consider that. And uh, until... Until next time, guys, thanks again for tuning in. For It's always kind of sad when we get to the end of one of these series. You know, when we get to get to the conclusion of something like this, it's like we've been playing this thing for months, for six-plus months, uh, better than, I think, since November of last year. So it's always kind of sad to, to see the end of it uh, and, uh, and you know, recognize that we won't have another Axis Let's Play. I don't think I'll return to an Axis Let's Play. I, I do plan to do uh, Strategic Command World War One when that comes out, whenever that is. Um, but, um, I don't think we'll do another Axis Let's Play of this, so, uh, maybe an Allied Let's Play, we'll see. Meanwhile, this is just giving you a quick summary of the detailed losses, or of the losses at the end. The UK lost 118 land units, uh, the F French lost 13, uh, the USA lost 139, the USA, uh, still lost less than the Soviet Union, which lost 165, uh, the Polish lost 13, the Chinese lost 96, uh, the Indians lost 39, the Germans 46, the Italians 20, and the Japanese 23. Air units, 13 British air units, 3 French, 37 American, 15 Soviet. Only 2 uh, Chinese air units, I think that's 6 uh, Indian air units, 3 German air units, and a lo just 2 Japanese air units were fully destroyed. 30, 51 British naval units, 84 American, 3 French, 29 German. The German Navy was largely obliterated. 11 Italian, same for them. The Japanese lost 9. We take a look at the detailed losses here. You can see a breakdown of all of this. If you want to look through it, you can pause the video and check that out. Um, but yeah, guys, thanks again for tuning in. And uh, until next time, uh, with something else, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.